Good morning. So today we're going to have a look at how you can create this really cool and simple wireframe uh, over your models in Blender to show off your typology. So this is a model I created in Autodesk Maya. I then imported it to a substance where I textured it and then imported it to Blender for the final render. Uh, it has a uh, decent uh, topology, which I want to show off to my future employers. So therefore I want to create a cool wireframe to show uh, yeah, the, the employers that I'm like good at topology. Uh, which you might want to do as well. So here you can see the model in wireframe mode. And there are lots of ways to create a wireframe render in Blender. But I found like most of them are really complex and uh, weird. So uh, in this video I'll show you how to create one very easily and very efficiently. So firstly we'll set up the scene here. So we're going to position the camera. Uh, somewhere around here, then by Control alt 0 pressing, uh, you snap the camera to the view. And then position the camera to your liking. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple turntable where the model spins ar around in a circle. So uh, this step is primarily just up to your own taste. Uh, so uh, yeah. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to spin it on the z-axis, so go to the first frame and then insert a keyframe on the rotation. And then we'll scale this up a bit. And then jump to the end, but this is important, go one frame further than the actual timeline. And then rotate it uh, 360 degrees, either clockwise or counterclockwise. I would suggest counterclockwise as uh, Turbo Squid um, recommends uh, counterclockwise for uh, turntables. And as you can see, uh, it has um, it's a full loop on 201 frames, but not 200. And by doing so, you get a perfect loop when playback. So if we have a look at it, you can see that it turns. And then when it hits 200, it starts over again. And I have the keyframe set to uh, linear at the moment, which is uh, something that your keyframes might not be, because I think on default they're set to Bessier. And you'll see the difference here. So if we have a look, you'll see that it starts slowly and then speeds up and then slowly fades down again. And this is something that we don't want, so go back and change these to linear. And we can hide the we can hide the plane here. So uh, now, if we have a look at it, you can see like here's our model in uh, rendered view, and uh, it looks a bit dull. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an area light just to give some um, nicer uh, edge light or uh, rim light. And we'll position lights just slightly in front of the model. And I'll change this to a disk to give it a more pleasing look and then increase the power to 2000 perhaps. We'll have to try this out, see how it looks. Mm. Yeah, it's better, but perhaps 5000. Mm, yeah, looks better. Mm. We'll move this slightly more in front. Mm. You know what? We'll try 10,000, actually. Mm, yeah. Alright. That looks good. Um, we'll just have a 
last uh, scrub through here before we render it. So, um, yeah, you can render it uh, however you want. Uh, I'll use cycles with a sampling of 50 and then check the uh, transparent box. This is important. Uh, but you can render it in Eevee or whatever. And then, of course, change the uh, resolution to whatever you want, the frame rate, then uh, specify an output folder, and in my case, RGB plus alpha, because I want the transparent background. Um, or you can just re like render the entire scene. Uh, this is entirely up, you, up to you. And uh, yeah, so after you've rendered it, now we want this nice wireframe effect over it to show that we're actually good at topology, which is important for employers. So I know there are like lots of weird ways to do it. Um, you could go with like modifiers and uh, change the thickness of the wireframe effect to get something like this. Uh, I've seen uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, but we're going to do a much quicker and more efficient way of doing it. So remove the modifier again. What we're going to do is we're going to go here to the uh, overlays uh, and we're going to check the uh, wireframe. You can play with the settings here. And then we're going to uncheck basically everything here. So just go, uh, go ahead and uncheck everything. Except the uh, wireframe, of course. And now we're left with a with a blank uh, viewport interface, except for the wireframe, which is what we want. So uh, we're in uh, shading uh, view at the moment. So here you can uh, change the look of the uh, wireframe model if you'd like. So you can go with like a clay uh, look or um, yeah, depends entirely up to your own taste, what you want. Uh, and uh, if we go with this, I think this black one is nice. Uh, but you can see that the wireframe is kind of hard to see. So what you want, what you want to do is go to uh, preferences and go to 3D viewport under themes and then here you can change the wire uh, the wire color and this is also up to your own taste so no right or wrong but um, I would suggest having it either black or white you don't want it to be too artistic perhaps unless it uh, suits your project but uh, yeah so this looks uh, kind of cool and if you go back to the camera view, you can see the model here. And if we have a look at it, it spins like it did before, which is cool. And uh, if you go to render view, all this will disappear and you will see basically what you have before. But we're not going to actually render it uh, using the renderer. You want to have the same settings. So uh, I go with 4K and then 25. Uh, frames per second and just change the output folder that's the only thing you want to change and uh, go with rgb plus alpha this is important uh, so instead go to view and down here you can see something called viewport render animation and this basically renders what the viewport is seeing at the current resolution you're at with an alpha and it's uh, quite fast, as you can see, it renders um, yeah, very fast, so which is nice. And then just go ahead and render the entire turntable. And as mentioned, it renders whatever is in the uh, 3D viewport. So if you have the overlays that we unchecked before, or you have something like a plane or something, it'll show up in the, uh, in the render. So go ahead and uncheck everything except for the model itself. 
And what you are left with is uh, two folders, one with the final render of your cool model, and then the other folder with only the uh, viewport render with an alpha, which is nice and very handy. So then go into your editor of choice. I'm using uh, DaVinci because it's free and very powerful. Uh, so drag and drop first uh, the first image sequence. You can do this in Blender, of course, as well. And if you click down here, you can see the project settings and just change it um, the same settings to whatever you rendered in uh, Blender. So for me, 25 FPS and 4K. If you're in the US, you're probably using 24 or 30. Doesn't really matter that much. And then just drag and drop the clips to the timeline, like so. And uh, these clips are actually still in 24 frames per second. So right click and go to clip, clip attributes and change the uh, frame rate so it matches the project. You want a consistent frame rate, whatever frame rate you're using, make sure that you're using the same frame rate. So uh, for me 25, uh, but for you it might be different. So. And uh, as you can see, when we play this back, it looks cool. Here's our turntable of the render and then of the uh, wireframe. And uh, how you go about showcasing this, also up to taste. But uh, you can stack these, and since uh, they are an alpha, if you uh, pull this little white tab here, you can have them slowly fade across. And uh, then we'll add one of these on the end. So if we have a look at it, you can see that it slowly fades over to the wireframe with the uh, look that we set before. And then you can go to the effects library and go to generators and then solid color. And then add whatever color that you fancy. Um, I'm probably going to add a white or something, I don't know. Perhaps I'll change this later, I don't know. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's basically it. So uh, if you're happy with this, you can go to the uh, render tab. And uh, I'm going to click the clips there. And then uh, change the file name to something good, like good apology or whatever and they change the location uh, yeah basic stuff here format I usually go with mp4 and uh, h265 h264 sorry codec uh, for uh, YouTube uh, you have presets up here and then uh, add render queue and then render and you're left with something like this that you can uh, post on YouTube or ArtStation or LinkedIn and uh, yeah showcasing your uh, good topology for future employers which is important if you want to work in the game industry you have to show that you're good at understanding topology so uh, hopefully you learned something from this and uh, thank you for watching I really appreciate it and uh, if you want to see more videos like this please uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.